Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. In the last episode, we completed the Lair of the Shadow Broker, and as I said at the end of the episode, we are going to have another round of squad member chats to the kick, please. Yes, we're going to talk to everyone to prepare ourselves for the IFF no mission. You, Commander. Okay, that's very nice, Kelly. I'm surprised by Thane's spiritual side. His psych profile mentioned little of it, and he carries himself with such cold confidence. You'll have to keep an eye on that one. Anyway, how may I help you, Commander? Ah, Kelly, if, if, if we keep an eye on him or we don't, we won't be telling you about it. Do you have a moment to talk? I always have time for you, Commander. Okay, yeah, nothing nothing new here. The reason why I always check in on Kelly is that at the beginning of this Let's Play, someone told me that Kelly will offer to take Shepard out for dinner, and then afterwards she'll offer to feed your fish. And, like, I'm at the end of the game, and that just hasn't happened for me. Now, here's the thing. To be honest, it doesn't really matter. Naomi... Naomi would, one, never have agreed to go out for dinner with Kelly, considering that, you know, she is extremely pro-Cerberus. She is happily involved in this terrorist organization. Kelly would probably poison her dinner. That would be Naomi's thought. I'm not going out to dinner with someone who is liable to poison me. And she would never leave Kelly with her fish. Hell, Kelly is probably the one who poisoned her fish. Kelly is probably the one who murdered her fish so, so long ago. So yet, it, it doesn't really matter to me that this never happened because Naomi would never have gone along with it. But I just find it interesting that, you know, it, it never happened. I guess, here's the thing. You could be very friendly with Kelly or you could be very cold. I've had Naomi be very cold. I'm assuming that there is some kind of like hidden friendship stat for Kelly. And that's what causes her to ask Shepard out for dinner. But I'm, I'm not sure. Like I said, doesn't matter in the long run because Naomi wouldn't have done it, but I just find that interesting. I better go. Okay. Maybe we'll talk later. Um I'm I'm pretty sure we've exhausted our dialogue with Joker. I'm pretty sure. But then again, yeah, you know, I'm I'm gonna check in with everyone. Like I'm even gonna check in with Jacob, just in case. Commander. Yep. Anything new? I assume everything's going well up here. Good for now. Fractured my thumb on the mute, but I think I made my point. Yeah, okay. That's it for now. See you, Commander. Tara. Now then, Morden and Jacob again. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that I've I've exhausted my dialogue with a pair of them, but I, I have to check. I have to check. Also, before I forget, let's... Yeah, let's grab these. The armor. Ooh, very nice. Very nice indeed. This is the med bay. Yeah, okay, nothing there. Okay, fantastic. Modern buddy. Shepard. How can I help? Have you got a minute to talk? Later, better. Think I've cured Joker's condition. Simple treatment would... No, 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 no. Would cause liver failure. Never mind. Start from scratch. Anything else? Yeah. Y y Joker needs his liver. Joker needs his liver. <laughs> I'll let you work. We'll be here if you need me. But if, if you figure anything out for him, you know, let, let us know. And Jacob? Commander. Can I help you with something? I'm more interested in just talking for a bit. I'm good, Shepard. Ready for anything. We live, we'll get loud, and spill some drinks on the Citadel. We'll talk later. Commander. Oh, that, that time for partying on the Citadel, it's, it's coming. It's coming, we're at the end of the game. The crew quarters. Anyone gossiping in here? No? Okay. And 
Samara, I'm, I'm not sure whether we reached the end of Samara's dialogue tree or not. Shepard. Samara. I thought we could chat a bit. I would like that. You have been a good friend to me. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, friendship. Friendship and only friendship. <laughs> Naomi is the big gay, so she would be interested in Samara, but we have just gone through um, traumatic heartbreak. You yeah, know, just nothing but platonic friendships all around. That means a lot to me. If we both still live when this is done, you may call upon me for aid at any time. I will come for you, Shepard. Okay, now that sounds like the end of her dialogue tree. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's running out of dialogue and it's making me emotional. Do you need something? This this brings us to asking about his religion. Um I have to check. I have to check. You mind if I ask you a few questions? Not at all. Yet yeah, nothing nothing new there. There's something else I'd like to talk about. Ask. Have a few minutes to talk? Very well. I am. I had been recording a message for Kolyat. How are things going with him? It is difficult. All things worth keeping are. I never explained. I suppose the story of my wife's death took you by surprise. I mean, it it did, but you know, Naomi Naomi isn't one to push. I don't think. You know, she she knew. Hey, he'll open up to me in his own time. Like I can wait. I figured you'd explain to me when you were ready. I appreciate your patience. I kept my work clear of our home life. I assumed that would be enough to protect Erika. That memory I mentioned before. Laser dot trembles on the target's skull. The smell of spice on a spring wind. Sunset eyes defiant in the scope. That was Erika. That was how I met her. She saw my targeting laser as she walked by and threw herself in the way. Ooh. Brave lady. Um, yeah, that is that is quite a jump. You know, defending someone from an assassin and then marrying the assassin. So how'd she go from blocking your shot to having your children? I had to meet her. The memory possessed and endowed me. I fell on my knees before her, begged her pardon. She introduced me to the world beyond my work. Eventually, she forgave me. Later, she loved me. Oh, for, for a minute then I thought Thane was going to be like, oh, I had to meet her, so I pretended to have this first interaction and I was going to be like, that's creepy. But no, he he didn't try and hide like, oh yeah, I totally wasn't the assassin from before. He just, he was like, yeah, that was me and I'm really, so oh, that, good job not being a creeper, Thane. Good job. I guess she impressed you. She woke me up. Her body trembles, not fear. Indignation. Her mouth moves. How dare you? You and I train to sacrifice ourselves to save others. How often does a civilian step in the way of a bullet to protect someone they've never met? I thought she was the goddess Hirashu. She met my eyes through the scope, and my purpose faltered. My god, she she sounds like a hell of a lady. When you talked to Kolyat, you said she died. I let myself become complacent. I thought Erika and Kolyat were safe. I stayed away too long, and my enemies came for her. Who came for her? Batarians. A slaver ring that was preying on Hanar out her colonies. I'd killed their leaders. They paid the Shadow Broker to find out who I was. But they were afraid of me. So they went after her. Oof. That's... That's fucking heartless, you know. Just, just go on told Kolyat that you hunted her killers down. Erika woke me up. When she passed, I returned to my battle sleep. My body hunted her killers, murdered them. I was taught to grant death quickly, cleanly, to minimize suffering. Them. I let them linger. Ooh. 
I mean... If, you know, Naomi thinking about this, a theoretical situation where, you know, she, she and Liara lived happily ever after. You know, they have a, a little Asari daughter and someone came and murdered them. I, I think that Ni Naomi absolutely would be like, I'm a fucking murder each and every single one of them. This is also fair. I wouldn't tell you some that. <laughs> your body did not your soul. I, I've said before, I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I find it so weird. I find it so, so weird that the writers were like, we have to make sure that Shepard is pro-terrorist. We have to make sure that Shepard is pro-terrorist. In the confrontation with Vizier, there's no option to say, yeah, Cerberus are terrorists and I don't like that I'm working for them. The, the only options are to say, oh, they did what they had to or yeah, I know they're terrorists and it doesn't matter to me. Shepard is pro-terrorist. That is canon. But pro-assassin? Oh God, no, that's too far. That's, oh God, no, that's monstrous. I'm like, what? What? That's, I, I, I think, I'm not gonna lie, that's one of my biggest complaints of Mass Effect 2. The writing is really confused. I'm like, you're okay with Shepard being pro-terrorist, but you won't let them be pro-assassin? What? Um, I, I said this at the time, um, because I'm, I'm talking about a, a past dialogue with Thane. Um, all, all of the options were like, I don't like what you're doing, I'm anti-assassin. Um, I think that Naomi... It, it's not that she's anti-assassin, you know, he's he's gained, he, he has employment. If, if you are murderous, which to be fair, Fane isn't murderous, but if you are murderous and you decide, right, I'm going to become an assassin to fuel my impulses, Naomi's like, good job. You, you found a job where you get to let out these impulses and you're not a serial killer on the streets, just murdering for the, for the fun of it. Like, good job. It's not that she's anti-assassin, it's that she doesn't understand this idea of like, oh, I didn't do it, my body did it. That's how I'm justifying her reaction. It's that she, like I said, she's like, hey, I don't care that you're an assassin. That's your job. You're not out murdering people. Someone paid you to do this. But for that, you wouldn't be killing these people. Why, why are you trying to differentiate between your body and your soul? That's weird to me. So I... Because of that, I can't go for this. Naomi doesn't understand this logic, so I can't go for this. And um, yeah, I my my gut was that, you know, hypothetically, if she married Liara and they had a daughter and someone murdered them, she would absolutely do the same. Yeah. I don't blame you. They killed innocents to get to you. For you and me, death is business. For people like them, it is sport. I haven't spoken about my wife in... I don't think I ever have. I didn't have anyone left to tell it to. Nope. She is still the big gay. She's waving her pride flag in the background. Uh, yeah, just focus on your kid. Focus on your kid in all of this. Kolya, you, you abandoned him. And he he deserves he deserves to have a loving dad in his life. And you can be that loving dad. Just just focus on making it up to him talking to your son again. That's huge. Don't lose sight of that by dwelling on should-have-beens. You are correct, of course. Thank you for listening, Siha. I think my translator just glitched. What did you call me? Siha. Someday I'll tell you what it means. Okay. Okay, buddy. Good talking with you. I think that didn't seem particularly final. I think we might have another one with Thane left. There you are. Hello. I usually travel hidden away in cargo bays. It's nice to be able to look out a window for a change. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd imagine that. And it is a very pretty view. Mess Sergeant Gardner might just be an evil genius. Emphasis on the evil. The food's gotten better lately, though. I guess his reputation will take time to heal. I'm not really sure what to do with myself. 
Not much call for thievery aboard a ship. Come back later. I'm sure I'll have more to talk about. Okay, Kasumi. Okay. Oh, it's been... It's been good having you on this adventure, my dear. I like Kasumi. And I like Miranda too, though I don't imagine she'll have anything to say. Commander, what can I do for you? Nothing new there. Do you have a minute, Miranda? There's a lot to do, Shepard. Maybe another time. You say that every single time! I'll let you work. Of course, Commander. Oh, she- I'm, I'm pretty sure Miranda was the first one we ran out of dialogue with. Oh. Miranda is so interesting. I- I never expected. I- I never expected- I, I think- I- I was surprised by how Naomi's relationship with Miranda panned out because again, you know, if you had said at the beginning of the game, oh hey, there's someone who's really pro-Cerberus. How, how do you think Naomi would react to that? Oh, well, she'd call her a bitch and she'd, like, slap her with a pistol and she'd, like, do all this awful stuff. But, like, by this point, Naomi's just like, oh, Miranda. Miranda, why? Come, come with me, Miranda. Come away from Cerberus. I will, I will show you the world. She's, it's almost like a, you know, like a sisterly type relationship. I would never have guessed that at the beginning of this game. Shepard, need me for something? Have you got a minute? Sure, just killing time anyway. Optimizing weapons, charges, planning attack vectors, you know. Relax. I'm still trying to figure out how to prepare for this mission. Humans don't deal with stress the way Turians do. Um, isn't this... Isn't this the exact same conversation as... I don't, I don't want to bang him! She's gay! She does not want to see his Turian dick. This, this generated dialogue in the comment section before. What is, because cause they're kind of based off birds. So do they have, do they have like a cloaca? Or do they have like a corkscrew dick, like a duck? I have to think about this and therefore now you have to think about this. I will not suffer alone. <laughs> Tell me in the comment section, what, what do you all think? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That thought haunts me. Oh, um, I, d I don't remember ask. I, I remember like, oh, what do you think our chances are and how do Turians prepare? Was this here before? Do you ever regret leaving CSAC or the Turian military? Not for a minute. When it comes down to it, Shepard, I don't think I'm a very good Turian. When a good Turian hears a bad order, he follows it. He might complain, but he knows his place. I just don't see the point in staying quiet and polite. Not when the galaxy is at stake. Okay, I remember that. I remember that. But, um, yeah, it, it seems like the game is just... Are you sure you don't want to discover what Tori and Dick looks like? I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> Goodbye. Thanks for the talk, Garrus. I'll see you later. Sure thing. Okay. I've... I, I can't look at Garrus the same. Not... So someone pointed that out in the comment section. Like I said, that I'm terrified. I'm terrified by that thought. How may I help you, Commander? Uh, with nothing, I guess. I'll see you later, Doctor. Commander. Oh, child class. You're still one of my favorites. And let's head down to engineering for the last few people. Now that I can see, I've got about 10 minutes left on my timer. I don't think this will take 10 minutes. Back for more. I used to do a little scorched earth work here and there. Then the Batarians started muscling in. No one's as good with terror tactics as they are. I mean, the Krogans will come at you, break your face, kill your family. But the Batarians, they'll turn your planet into a glass parking lot without a second thought. Jesus. I'm trying to remember, what was his name? Salarian infiltration specialist. Hundred story man. Guy could disable a station security with a few taps on an Omni tool. He went to work with Eclipse a few years back. Had to kill him for a job. Your Morden Solus kind of reminds me of him. Hmm. 
I should let you go. Talk more later, Shepard. Okie doke. Okie doke. And Tali, anything to say? Shepard, what can I do for you? Have you got time to talk? I really need to clean up this engine. Maybe later? Okie doke. I'll let you work. Talk to you later. Gabby, you'd say the Normandy is a she, not a he, right? Of course. The Normandy's the sweetest girl there is. And Edie's a she. Tally's definitely a she. What are you getting at, Kenneth? I'm just saying I'm feeling a wee bit threatened here. A lot of female energy, and I'm just one man. You're such a dick. See? Look where your mind went. I've got to watch out for myself. Well, if, if it makes you feel any better, um, the, the captain of this ship, Naomi would disagree that she's the sweetest girl out there. Um, but the, the captain of this vessel um, has absolutely no interest in your penis, if that makes you feel any more secure, Donnelly. What can we do for you, Commander? Yeah, nothing at all. Carry on. Will do, Commander. And Jack, my dear? Anything new with you? Hey. Hey. What's happening? You got a lot of questions, don't you? Yeah, I'm interested. I miss your friendly nature when you're not around. I've been thinking. We've seen a lot of shit together now, and you're always coming to talk to me. It's just, I'm not really a girls club kind of person. I like you, all right? That's a good place to stop. Okay. That... That was nice. Naomi wasn't hitting on you, but... Like, okay. Good talk, Jack. That leads back in there. And last, but by no means least... Oh, my buddy. My adopted son. Shepard. Yeah, okay. Just checking in. How are you doing? Battlemaster, I have everything. Clan, kin, and enemies to fight. That's all for now. Shepard. I love Brunt so much. Oh, I, I want to put his drawings up on the fridge. They're drawings of murder. But I'd still put them up on the fridge because he is my boy. Now then, as we have five minutes left, here's what I'm gonna do. Um, you know what, first things first, do I have... Okay, yeah, I'm stocked up on everything. Let's head to the system where the Reaper is. Where be you? Right here. Okay, yeah, we're gonna head to Thorn. If there's any planet scanning that we need to do, I'll do that now. And then, okay, a couple of planets. Ooh, very nice little meteorite ring or whatever that is. And um, yeah, we'll scan these planets and then at the beginning of the next episode, we can make a start on the Derelict Reaper. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Leth. Leth is the biggest moon of... Mm. Nemozny, I'm sorry, massive enough to retain its own thin atmosphere of methane and nitrogen, and heated by the brown dwarf to relatively moderate temperatures. While nearly the size of Earth, its overall density is low, suggesting a paucity of valuable heavy metals. It is tidally locked to Nemozny, one hemisphere always bathed in the brown dwarf's heat and dim red light. The moon experiences constant weak tectonic activity, driven by the tidal fluxes of Nemozny's gravity rather than Leth's own internal heat. Several large ancient volcanoes release wide-ranging flows of molten silicate. Orbital distance, 2,323,500 kilometers from Nemozny, Orbital period, 16.4 Earth days. Radius, 5,663 kilometers. Day length, 16.4 Earth days. Atmospheric pressure, 0.58 Earth, 
Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, 31 Celsius. Surface gravity, 0.59 G. Okay, and you are rich. Launching probe. I know I don't need to be scanning at this stage. Like, we're, we're at end game. We are at end game. I don't care. I want all of the shit. I want it all and I want it now. Probe launched. I'm not really getting it. There's a big spike. Probe away. Ooh. Don't mind if Pump I do. Away. Yoink. And yeah, I'll leave it there. Why not? Okay, yeah, only only three things in this system. Namosni. Namosni is a brown dwarf of approximately 37 Jupiter masses. It is young enough that some nuclear fusion still occurs within its depths. It is luminous and radiates more heat than it receives from the star form, with an atmospheric temperature in excess of 1,800 degrees Kelvin, 1,500 degrees Celsius. Early probes of Thorn showed evidence of a minor gravi gravitic anomaly in the northern hemisphere. This area of unexpectedly low mass did not move with the prevailing wind patterns. While an investigation was planned by the Besserell Institute of Planetary Science, or BIPS, I like that, BIPS, um, the school ultimately sent an expedition to study the famed deep anomalies of the gas giant Clover instead. Orbital distance, 0.81 AU. Orbital period, 0.8 Earth years. Radius, 72,541 kilometers. Day length, 18.7 Earth hours. And oh, why not? Let's start here. Probe away. Only moderate, but let's see what we can get. Oh, hello. Probe away. And you can come along too. I think I'm just gonna go after the really large. Probe launched. The really large spikes. Away. Okay, and down to poor. And okay, there we go. Good enough. Okie doke. And with that done, all we have left to do is go after the derelict reaper, which we shall do in the next episode. So until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista, thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.